evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to our 9th and 10th grade parent night. My name is Michelle Pesci. I'm the chairperson of our Counseling and Student Support Services Department. Just to give you an idea, each year we put on a grade level presentation uh, with topics pertaining to your child's grade. So actually, currently, we're hosting two nights. We have our 8th graders in the cafeteria and our 9th and 10th grade parents here. With us this evening to present to you, we have Dr. Valdez and Mr. Cobb behind me. They're two of our high school counselors. And our remaining high school counselors are also here this evening, Mr. Mitchell, Ms. M Ms. Marino, and Ms. Pulsifer. Um, after our presentation, we ask if you hold questions to the end. We are live recording this evening for parents who couldn't make it. So any questions that you have, it may come up, we may address it, but if not, we'll open the, um, the floor to questions at the end of the presentation. So just to review quickly what we're going to speak about this evening, uh, we are going to start talking about planning for post high school plans. I know that sounds like a little crazy that your children are only in ninth and 10th grade, but it does go quick. So we wanna to talk to you about all of the things that we're doing with ninth and 10th graders to start preparing them for college or what they wanna do after high school. We're also going to review uh, high school credit requirements, the required regents exams that they need, diploma types, We'll talk about NCAA requirements for students who want to play athletics in college. We'll discuss our advanced and AP programs, hopefully answer all your questions for that. We'll discuss our career technical programs, how to apply to them, and how we're speaking to students about the career tech programs that we have at Solanica. We'll review what a New Hyde Park High School transcript looks like, because as ninth graders, students are starting to build their high school transcript. We'll discuss our honor societies. We have many different honor societies here. There's academic honor societies as well as the junior honors and senior honor society. We'll talk about the attendance policy in school and the importance of being in classes, and also our uh, support services and how we support our students socially and emotionally. So to start our presentation, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Valdez and Mr. Cobb. Again, I thank you so much for being with us this evening. As the school counseling department, we really are the hub of the school, I think. Anything that you need, you can always contact us. We can help be a liaison to your teachers. Um, if you have any questions about what's going on in school, how to get your children involved, how to get them the support they need, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you again for being here. Okay, so welcome. I'm Dr. Valdez. Um, the, the most important thing we want you to know is at the beginning of ninth grade, for those of you who have ninth graders, that's the beginning of transcripts and all the things that are very important for a student who's heading off to college in a few short years. So one of the things that we do with students and you can see up on the board is every year we do something with Naviance for the students. Uh, an interest inventory um, or student, the way to, so that they can learn how, how they best study. You know, one student might learn best in, in a, with noise in the background, another student might, might need total silence. So there's learning styles and inventories. There's all different things that we do with them every year so that by the time we get up to picking college majors, students are then able to um, more accurately know themselves and then pick college majors and then uh, colleges that would suit them the best. Um, Naviance is also the way we do college searches and um, uh, we actually send the documents to the colleges through Naviance. So there's all different things, and the students have, they all have um, an account since seventh grade, so you can ask your, your child to log in, and if, they're, if they've been here since uh, seventh grade, you'll see that there's at least a couple of the different uh, surveys that have been done. <clears throat> so one of the things that's most important for students is that they get involved. <coughs> Being involved is important for so many reasons. Uh, we want students to know that, that they are a part of the New Hyde Park Gladiator family, and that by being involved in different clubs and activities helps them to feel like they belong, which is very important, especially for students that were you know, uh, stuck in their homes for, for a couple of years. So we want them to feel that sense of belonging in our school. Um, but also, colleges look for that. Every college has a school newspaper or a school uh, yearbook or, or um, you know, whatever clubs, uh, a tennis club, whatever it may be. They all have that. So if a student was in one of those activities in high school, it's very likely that the student will then continue that um, activity in college. So if they're the uh, captain of a team, or the president of a, of a club, or editor of, a, of one of the literary things that we have, the college is going to be interested in that. Certainly they have to meet the academic profile that the college sets, 
but please know that those activities are very important for the student and also helps um, for them to say, you know what, I didn't like this, it's seventh and eighth grade, so now I'm going to head in this other direction. So it also helps them to, to navigate what are their better, where their strengths and weaknesses are. <clears throat> you can see on the resume here, there's different things like awards and honors. Uh, you know, a ninth grader or a tenth grader may not have awards and honors yet. So what we recommend is that you take uh, any of the, the programs or, or events that your child might be in, throw them in a folder, or create a, a, an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document where you're throwing the, the, the data into it. Um, Naviance actually has a resume maker, so the students can be using that, and then at the end they can just uh, hit a button and it turns into a, a, um, a resume that they can print out. It's not, it's not pretty looking, you know, it's not well, um, um, but here you can see the extracurricular activities, the volunteering and community service, which is also very, very important. Um, <clears throat> the activities, their work experience. Yeah. Uh, their work experience, if they have any work experience, um, and leadership. And not every student is going to get something in every category. But just know that those are important categories for students. Sometimes language is spoken, travel, uh, places travel. It, uh, what I tell students is, have something for a category, and if it's a lot, we're going to throw that category at the top of the resume, and if they don't have a lot, it's going to not be in the resume of that category. So just realize that we work with the students, and this is just a fake resume that I tend to give out to my students so that they have an idea of how to do it. Um, All right, so um, going into college, right, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, colleges are now test optional, right? So uh, we know that SATs and ACTs are the standardized tests that uh, these uh, students are taking uh, upon their interest to college. Um, it does not matter which uh, test that the student prefers to take. We actually encourage um, students to take one of each and see which test they feel like they're more comfortable <coughs> taking. Right? As a as a tenth grader, right? You got your students will be able to take a practice SAT. Uh, in the uh, spring of this year. And then also as 11th graders in the fall, they'll be able to take a practice SAT. The practice SAT is between 100 and 160 and uh, 760 points for each section, adding up to a maximum of 1520, all right? Um, I mentioned that they, they'll take it on top of junior year, but now we're offering it to the uh, sophomores in the spring. These practice SATs have given these uh, students an opportunity to be qualified for a National Merit Scholarship. And all they need to do is sit down, take the practice SAT, and the scores will do the rest. If, if for some reason they qualify, they'll be contacted directly, and the counselors will know. For the SAT, uh, students usually, for the SAT and ACT students usually start to take those um, spring of junior year, right, because they've already got a practice in, so they have they'll take it spring of junior year, and then most students will take it again in August or in October or November and the, on their upcoming senior year. We stay away from December dates due to uh, deadlines of colleges and college applications. For the SAT exam, it scored from, from 200 to 800 points on each section, adding up to a maximum score of 1,600. For the ACT, uh, students can be scored uh, from 1 to 36 on each section, uh, which is the English, reading, math, and science section, the optional writing section. Those scores will then be averaged together. Um, so being that a lot of colleges are test optional, we still encourage that you take these exams because they can help with financial aid. Um, these exams can strengthen your transcript, right? Sometimes I'll tell the students we may have had a rocky start to high school in ninth to 10th grade, right? So we can show the trajectory of us going up. We, we're doing better in 10th grade, we're doing better in 11th grade. Now our SAT and ACT scores will kind of just confirm that we're ready for that next uh, level of education. So just, I just uh, remember though that as your, your students are ninth and 10th graders, so we do not know how that optional policy will be for schools by the time your student is a 12th grader. So we do recommend that they do take the PSAT 10 as 10th graders that our district is giving this year. The, those that have ninth graders, you know, we'll see what happens next year if we never are sure. Um, then the, the PSAT is for the 11th grade, uh, yeah, the 11th graders in the fall, and then everything else is for the 12th, 11th in the spring and 12th. 
colleges may be test optional, but you may apply for a program that requires an SAT, right? So just because of the school's test optional, the nursing program may say, look, we're looking at SAT scores. If it's test optional, right? You take your exam, you take your standardized test. Now you can sit with your counselor and you guys can kind of do some research uh, of the college, university, and see whether your score fits into that middle average, middle 50%, and then we can kind of determine whether it makes sense to send those scores over or not. Sometimes the college admissions rep will give us a bit of uh, a bit insight about that as well. We, we can call, we can have that conversation with them, and they'll tell us whether that score may strengthen or maybe weaken our application. Right? So we still encourage that we take that exam because there's nothing to lose. As high schoolers, we have gradu uh, graduation requirements. Um, every student is required to have 22 credits at graduation, four of those credits being English, four of those credits being social studies, three of those credits being math and science each. Uh, every student needs a world language uh, for the most part, unless you're language exempt. Every student must take an art or a music class in high school. This is new, right? So the ninth graders this year all have a financial literacy class and that's also a graduation requirement going forward. Uh, but we'll put, we'll kind of put that uh, class on the schedule where we'll make sure that every student has that. Uh, every student is required to take a health class and we usually take health in 10th grade. Every year, students must take a visual education class totaling up to two credits. Gym is every other day, so it's counted as a half year credit. So if we earn a half year of gym every year, it comes out to two credits. And then we need a total of three electives. Uh, it's three and a half, but the financial literacy will count as that half elective that we usually ask for. So then we need three other credits. 22 credits isn't hard to, to accumulate, right? That's just the bare minimum that the students need. Um, right now, they'll take a lot of required classes, but going into 10th, 11th, 12th grade, students will be exposed to more um, different courses, uh, more electives that they'll have the option to take that they, they won't be required, right? So we like to, we, we want students to take classes that they may have some interest or in, they're passionate about. So we mix those in going forward uh, and we'll get into some of those classes that we offer. Okay, so the, the state has, and first of all, I should say that this uh, presentation will be on the school website. Um, in the next day or two. I don't know exactly when it will go up, but just so you know, it will be on the website. So New York State has, for the most part, two diplomas that they allow. So it's the Regents Diploma and the Advanced Regents Diploma. And for the most part, our students, no matter you know, what they're doing, they, most of our students will get that Advanced Regents Diploma. Um, and, and we aim for that. We're trying to get the students to work as hard as possible for all four years of high school. Not just, you know, that we can um, work very hard the first three years so we can slack in senior year. Colleges don't want to see that. They want to see that students have worked hard all four years. So, you know, even if a student has met all of their requirements, we are still encouraging them to take the advanced class or the AP class or to take the fourth science credit or the fourth math credit, um, knowing that that will increase their chances of getting into a, a good college. So we do encourage that. Um, just so you know, and then the financial literacy class, the kids, for the most part, are taking opposite their health class. So when they take health in 10th grade, the other half of the year will probably be where they get that financial literacy class. Um, okay, so the Regents Diploma, you can get with honors, uh, and mastery designation, meaning that you've gotten an 85 or higher on either math, all three math tests, uh, Regents exams, or three science regents exams, or a combination of, of those. So as long as you get an 85 or better on the regents exams, you would get the mastery designation. Advanced regents diploma, and we have a, a, a slide that we're gonna show you in a minute, there's more regents exams that the students have to take. So for the most part, they are taking an extra science exam, they're taking um, an extra two math exams, they're taking the world language exam, so they, they are working much harder and getting more regents exams under their belt. 
Uh, the local diploma is for students with disabilities or with students who, who don't speak English. It's not their first language. So they are entitled to different pathways to get to graduation. So here we have, and, and again, this is right out of the school catalog. So if you go onto the district website, you can get uh, this and, as well as all the other information. Um, but the, the re Regents requirements for the Regents Diploma as a, and then compared to the Advanced Regents Diploma. So you can see that English, they, they all have to do. Math, they, they have to do algebra. No matter what, they all need algebra. But when you go for that Advanced Regents Diploma, you have to do geometry and algebra too. Um, then there's the Global Studies, U.S. History, one science for the Regents Diploma, two sciences for the advanced regions diploma, and again, many of our students do more than that. Um, and then there are pathways that students can do. The pathways are very good ways for our students to graduate. But again, we are looking to make sure students are doing the, um, the most that they can do to go to college and to get to a good college. So those requirements for the advanced regions diploma are the ones that we are trying to get them to do without going for the pathway, because the pathway sort of pushes them, like, just seems like, I don't want to say pigeonholes them, but, they, but it has them only in one area and sort of not in another area. So we do try to, to get them to do the advanced regions diploma. So for the regions diploma, your, your child will take about five regents exams, and for the advanced regions, they'll probably take about eight, uh, or possibly nine, depending on if they're in the language and they have to pass the language proficiency test. Um, we'll talk about career technical education, and she mentioned pro, uh, pathways. So students can still get the advanced regents diploma if they aren't in language for three or four years and pass the proficiency exam. So we just talked about you know the, the the regents diploma and the advanced regents diploma. So the NCAA, uh, if if any student um, has any hopes, dreams, aspirations, or think they're even good enough to play Division One and Division Two. They have to be eligible for the NCAA. Uh, to be, they have to be eligible for the NCAA, right? So that's there's an eligibility center that they'll go on, and we like to get we have to get these students signed up in ninth grade. Um, those students, right? Mr. Mitchell's here. He's like the liaison for um, the clearinghouse. They call it the NCAA clearinghouse. But myself, I'm also a coach. Uh, Mr. Gagnon is a coach as well. So if the student uh, has those uh, hopes and dreams, have them come talk to one of us or even their counselor, and we'll make sure that they're set up uh, for the eligi eligibility center, and we'll make sure that they're taking the right classes. Right. So to be eligible for the NCAA, you kind of almost have to be on the region's track. Right. We have to make sure we're taking the correct classes in our core subjects uh, to keep ourselves eligible. So if you guys have any questions about that, or your, your child has those types of uh, plans, have them come see the counselor, all right? So we offer advanced and AP courses, all right? So those are some of the electives that we spoke about that we can start getting into, right? Before we go into an advanced or AP course, so if I'm in a math class, in order to go from advanced to AP the next year, we must first have an overall average of an 85 in that class for all four quarters, right? So quarter one, two, three, four, and that final exam. We want to see consistency of that 85 and show that we're really grasping the information. <coughs> Second is the teacher recommendation, right? So we'll, we'll talk to the teacher or the teacher recommends students on which classes they should go on for the next year, right? Obviously, you know, the teacher works, works with your child every day for the entire year, so they have a kind of a good grasp on what your child excels in uh, and where they may best fit for the next year. So we take all of that into the consideration, and obviously we want your child to have some type of interest in taking that advanced or EP class. We'll talk about weightings a bit later, uh, but advanced classes are weighted a bit heavier than uh, regular normal regions class, and then AP classes are weighted even higher than those. The reason why they're weighted higher is because we ask more of the child in that class, right? Uh, the class. Uh, so that's why we want to make sure that these students are understanding the information before they go into these classes.
And then lastly with that is, all right, so say if I'm in the normal regions class, not advanced or not AP, we can have the 85, right? But it's a big jump from a normal regions class to an AP class. So we kind of say 85, right? But if we're in a normal regions class, it's a gray area. We do like to see a 90, 93-ish, right, to show a bit more mastery, especially to jump to AP, right? If you got the 85 and you want to go advanced, we're all for it. But we do know that going from a regular regions class to the AP course is a big jump. So we just want to make sure that we, we cover our pieces. And, and the one thing to keep in mind is that because they're really, really enforcing the no-drop policy, we, that's why we really are trying to listen to the teachers. The teachers know the curriculum that's coming up and they've worked with your child for the whole year. So knowing what the curriculum will be and knowing that the student can't drop, we really want to try to work with the families, work with the student, but listen to the teacher on what kind of work will be expected and where your child's strengths and weaknesses are. Okay. So the advanced placement program, uh, like Mr. Uh, Cobb was saying, it is college level classes that we offer in all subject areas. Most of those classes, but not all, are in 11th and 12th grade, so towards the end of, of you know, to the top senior year before they would be going off to college. Um, the very difficult classes, they're taught to a national standardized level. Uh, there's a mandatory AP exam that goes with the, the class, and those exams are traditionally given during the first two weeks of May. And the, the test costs $99. So if a student is taking uh, two or three, it can, you know, right. the price can, can uh, jump up pretty quickly. And that money is collected in um, late October and November. We have to place the order by November 15th of the school year. So um, we, we do collect that money early. Also, we do have some students who are interested in trying to do self-study. And that's something that really has to be a conversation individually with the counselor and then with my chairperson, Ms. Pesci. Um, Self-study is a, a great idea, but as our students are getting into more and more and more activities, their time is limited. And we just want to make sure that if they are, if we're ordering the test for them and they're paying for the test, that they are preparing properly for it. And usually when we talk to the students, we're able to figure out that they can take the, the class the following school year. Um, you know, we, we offer so, so many of them. Um, but any questions you would have about APs, either I can answer them, Ms. Pesci could answer them, um, you know, any of the counselors could answer them. So, uh, as a district, we, are, we offer uh, work-based programs, right? We give ch uh, students a chance to kind of go get outside and kind of learn with their hands rather than the traditional sit at your desk and <laughs> copy notes, right? So, we, we offer... about nine or 10 different programs, right? Most of them are two-year programs, but we do have uh, a couple three-year programs, right? So for the two-year program, we have A-plus computer technology and networking. <coughs> we have cosmetology, a cosmetology program. We have a culinary arts program, a medical assisting program, which is new this year, a digital arts and game design program. We have automotive technology and construction trades. Those are all two-year programs. All of these programs are offered at Sawanika High School. Uh, if the class starts in the morning, um, they'll be required to get, the, get to Sawanika themselves, but they will be bused to New Hyde Park after that. If it's in the afternoon, um, they can get a bus to Sawanika, and there are late buses that comes back to New Hyde Park at the end of the day. Um, as far as applying to these programs, well, the three-year programs are architecture and design and pre-engineering, right? So the application process works like this. So for the three-year programs, at the end of ninth grade, they'll come, they'll, they'll sit with me, they'll tell me they have an interest in joining these programs. These students will be asked uh, a number of questions about their interest and what they can do with the program. These questions are important. Uh, I'm on the committee myself, so when we sit down and we discuss each student's interests and what they want to do with the program, that goes into the decision making a lot. Obviously, you know, grades matter, attendance matters, and we'll talk about the attendance policy later. 
right? But knowing what the student wants to do with the program goes a long way, right? So if we get the vague answer, it looks fun, right? Well, take that into consideration, right? But if we have students that have a lot more detail and what they envision while joining and after joining the program, what they're doing right now, if it relates to, those are the students that we know are, look, they want to be in there, they have a plan. Right? So if, you, if you're applying for these programs, we kind of want to see a plan, and we want to see that that's kind of something you want to do in the future more than I just want to try it out. Right? If it's based on the program, you want to try it out, we may let you in, but those other kids who kind of seem a bit more serious or a bit more definite in what they want to do, those kids may get the upper hand. And Obviously matching with the grade and the attendance and things like that. And traditionally, there's wait lists every year yeah. for these programs. So the, the uh, career expo that we will have here in, in this room for the current 8th, 9th, and 10th graders is going to happen, we believe, on December 8th, sometime that week. Um, we've been assigned the 8th at the moment. We'll see if that changes. Um, and then at some point, probably the following week, but again, we don't have a definite date, there's an evening event for parents and students to go to, to Sawanica to see the programs as well. So you can see if it's something that you're interested in. And right after that, so middle of the school year, when we're doing all the applications for, uh, excuse me, when we're picking classes for the following school year, your child would then put in an application for one of these programs if they're interested in it. Um, if then accepted, and again, like I said, there are wait lists, but if accepted, when we leave in June, that commitment is then carried through. So they can't come back in September and be like, I changed my mind, I don't want it. They are now committing to a two or a three year program um, and, and that commitment is taken very seriously because if a student doesn't stay with the program, then their seat stays empty for the, the continuation of that program. We can't fill it with a student you know, in culinary two when they didn't sit for culinary one. So it's very important to so, say yeah, to be fair to others, we want to make sure you really want to be in that program. Because if you join, you join for two months and then you're begging to get taken out of your program, you just took a spot from a student who really wanted to be in that program and could have really used it. So that's why we just make sure we want the students to really think about it and want to do that. Uh, the expo, they'll get a chance to go on stage and get hands on, mess with curling irons, uh, they'll be able to nail. So they'll really get a chance to get hands on at the expo and figure out if that's something they want to do going forward the next year. And you certainly can talk to the counselor if they can give more information. Okay, so now the transcript. This is something that, uh, you know, every, every child is accruing their transcript starting in many students in eighth grade. So there was three classes that most students took in eighth grade that counted towards their high school credits. That was Algebra One, Living Environment, and their foreign language, as long as they took seventh, passed it, eighth, passed it, and the Plax A. So as long as they passed those three things, they got their one language credit that they needed for, for um, graduation. Uh, again, like I said before, we really do try to make sure our students do what they need for college, not just to get out of high school. So when we encourage the student to go on in foreign language to their second or their third or their fourth year, it's because we know colleges are looking for multilingual students. Um, and then you can see ninth grade and 10th grade, 11th grade, and you know, this, this particular student, we have some AP classes, we have advanced classes, um, and like Mr. Cobb was saying before, we have 1.05 is multiplied to advance the final grade for an advanced class, and 1.08 is multiplied to the end of a, to the final grade of an advanced placement class to get a weighted GPA. So when we send transcripts off to colleges, there's always an unweighted grade point average, and that's where they just add up the classes and divide by the number of credits. And then there's a weighted average where if a student were to take AP and advanced classes, it's going to show that extra weight in, in their uh, GPA. And they do weights like that, obviously, because you, you make it more, you take it more of a challenging class, so naturally your grade may go down. So that's just kind of a way for the grade to balance back out. And then also in the bottom right, you can see that the student has all the different uh, regents exams and assessments. In this case, because of COVID, a lot of these for exams and essays for um, special appeal uh, was given out the last few years. That has now gone away. So August was the last time we were able to give essays to students if they got between a 50 and a 64. From this point on, so if a student were to take a January, a June, or an August regents exam, they have to get a 65 or better 
to move on, uh, you know, to, to graduate, to, to pass that class. So your transcript's gonna show you everything throughout your high school career as far as grades. Uh, classes, grades, credits, um, assessments, uh, credits earned, credits not earned. So then even as seniors, we, uh, we give these to the seniors before we make them official to give them a chance to look it over and double check it themselves. And then we finalize them as seniors, obviously, and then we send them out to colleges or wherever we need to send uh, the transfer. Because obviously college may not be for everybody, right? So we still consider that, but we do want to make sure we have that. Heidi, I am the advisor for that. Uh, students are become eligible when they have a 90.0 unweighted average at the end of the market period three of either eighth grade, ninth grade, or tenth grade. So many students, uh, have already been inducted, but each year you have you start with a fresh slate. So it would be market period one, two, and three of eighth grade or ninth grade or tenth grade, um, and then we require them to do five hours of community service, which is really, really, really a low number. But it just helps this, the kids to get out and do things um, and, and help out. And then the dues is is uh, usually like about ten dollars or so. Um, National Senior Honor Society is only for twelfth graders. Students have to have a 90.0 weighted average, so that's where those classes, the AP and, um, and advanced classes can come in and, and into play. But they also, once they meet that 90.0, then they need to prove community service, leadership, and um, activities. So once they have the, the average, then they get the application to prove the other things. Um, and, and a committee decides the, the students that go into that. Uh, I'm going backwards a little bit because you mentioned AP courses and I just thought about something. So, yes, AP courses look great on the transcript, but we also want students to do well and not spread themselves thin, right? So, obviously, taking a lot of AP courses, it costs, right? But if you take a lot of AP courses, right, you could only put so much time into certain classes, right? So, what we do is we tell students to take AP classes that they're really passionate about or that they can see themselves going in the future where it may strengthen their transcript for college, right? If you want to go to college and be an English teacher, right, we want to consider all the AP English classes, right? But if you're going for AP, if you're going for college for an English teacher, the AP math may not be, may not mean much on the transcript, right? So that's how we kind of match that up and tell the students how they should take their AP courses. So just be mindful of that. Because sometimes students just say, oh, I want to take AP course because they'll make my transcript look good and they just know as many as possible. But in the end, it spreads them thin and it may not always be the best thing. Um, okay, so every subject area has a, um, an honor society that a student could qualify for. Each of them has different uh, requirements. So rather than list them all here, we, re we encourage students to find out from the different departments what the requirements would be for the different um, honor societies. But these are all the ones that we have in our building. Okay, so obviously we want, we want your students to be the best they can be, right? So we want to offer as much academic support to the students as possible. Your student is the first person to know that they may need help with something, right? So they're, they're first. What we ask them to do is to reach out to the teacher. Uh, the teacher is the one teaching the class. The teacher knows exactly which topics they're on. Uh, so reaching out to that teacher right away, maybe when you need uh, or you may not have understood a topic, we can, we can work with that right away. You guys can set up a time during lunch or they may can explain it after class. That's first. Obviously, that's not always the answer. Right, so obviously we will offer different type of services as well. After school, Monday through Thursday, we have what we call the homework center. So students are able to go to the library, do the homework that they need to do, and there's teachers floating around the library. So if you have a subject question, you can ask that teacher a question. It may not be your specific teacher, uh, but someone will be there to help you. We have peer tutors, right? So we have students who excel in specific uh, subjects, right? So what we do is, and a lot of them are part of the honor societies, and with that comes community service. How they get their community service sometimes is tutoring. So if a student is willing to tutor in whichever subject that they feel a 
Big Selling or the Great Show, we usually may introduce them to a student who's asking for a tutor. These two students are able to meet during school on the free period or after school. It's kind of up to those two students to make that schedule and get their tutoring done. Obviously, we'll sign off on the uh, community service as long as you guys both come back and tell me how you've been meeting, and we're good with that. We have Operation Success that starts mid-November, where specific subject teachers will have these extra helps um, in, in classes before or after school, and these will be available to all students in every class. Uh, around Regents time, we'll have Regents review classes as well, right? So if a student feels like they have specific questions or they just want the extra review, we'll have Regents review as well. Um, and then anything we can do, we want to be able to help them, assist them in any way possible. But obviously they have to let us know what's going on and we'll, we'll help out. And in all cases, if a student does need help, the counselor can help to set it up to point you in the right direction. We also have something called paper tutoring. Papers. Papers with an S. Tutoring. It's a 24-7 tutoring service. So it's not the Sawanica District teachers, but we have, we're affiliated with the program and the students have access to signing in. It could be 1 o'clock in the morning. It could be 3 o'clock in the morning. They can log on the app and they basically uh, offer the tutoring or they can find a tutor to help them with whatever they may need help with, right? They can text it out, uh, they can send pictures of the problem and the tutor will kind of help work them through it. Uh, the school does have access to seeing these conversations so we do tell the students to be smart, right? It's not a joking matter. If you need help, go on, ask for help. If not, leave it alone. Um, but we do have that available. If your child doesn't know how to log in, uh, tell them to come down to guidance, uh, tell them to come down to the counseling office and we can help them sign in and figure that out. Obviously, you know, some students may need more support other than academics, right? Sometimes we need the social, social emotional support. Uh, we understand how important that is to demonstrate their empathy and resilience while building relationships with the students. Right, so we want to support them when they need support, and we want to tell them they're doing great when they are doing great. Right? So we don't want to just be there when they need help. We want to be there when they're doing great. We want to be there when they need support as well. Um, we are partnered with Northwell. Um, they help students in crisis and students who need uh, immediate intervention. We do have a psychologist, Ms. Lisa Shula, and we have three social workers, uh, Dr. Sanzone Goodrich, Ms. Vasek, and we have Dr. Krasinski, who's new to us this year. Um, when you have access to this presentation, there is a, a manual uh, uh, bottom left where there's some support services, some phone numbers that you can contact if you need. As a district, we have an attendance policy. I myself used to be an attendance TA, um, but with COVID, it got a bit tricky. You know, we had the remote, we had the in-person, but now we're being a bit more strict with it. Uh, so for half year class, the students only allowed 12 absences um, on the ability of losing credit. For a full year class, that doubles, right? So 24 absences, you'll lose credit on the 25th absence. Uh, three lates equals one absence. So if you're late to class three times, the teacher's gonna just put the absent in, or the attendance is going to see that and it's just going to add up to an absence. Um, this new appeal approach, so after you may be absent on that 25th day, uh, you'll obviously be in the boat of losing credit, uh, then you'll have to appeal, you'll have to talk to the, the principal and we'll figure out whether you'll get credit for the class or not. And a lot of times that comes down to whether your absences were excused or unexcused, right? If you've been sick, right, and it says medical for 12 days or illness for 12 days, we get that. But if it just says absent, unexcused, absent, unexcused, family trip, then we won't. And I say family trip because, you know, sometimes we think family trip is an excused absence. It's not, right? We know when school is, so we kind of, look, emergencies come up, right? Emergencies come up and we get that. 
But the family trips, let's limit those, right? Obviously, we get out breaks during school, but those absences do come out as unexcused. Because um, we can plan around it, right? Um, one of the things that I, I uh, also try, I don't do math, I'm not a good math person, but if you multiply 12 absences times 42 minutes, that's a lot of class time you've missed. We, we try to get the students to understand how every minute of every class is important. So if you miss three classes and you come back, you're lost, you've missed all that beginning material. So we really want the students to understand that's the maximum that they're allowed. They shouldn't be absent at all. Really, they shouldn't be absent at all. If you, if you did that at a job, you'd probably get fired. So you know, we do want them to understand that this is life and that they need to try to, to um, you know, we, we know that they're still kids, but that they need to try their best to step up and to, to get into school and get into class and all that stuff. And while we have some students with some um, you know, mental health things, we have them come into our office. They come in and sit in the counseling office and they, they relax and we help them to get ready to go into class. So just realize that them staying at home or you calling and saying that they're home isn't okay. We need them to come in and be with us and, and integrate into the building. She mentioned class time, right? And I just sit in an AP class missing three days, right? That's a lot of work and you're behind. And I almost kind of had that situation today with the student who missed a couple of days of AP and now they, they, they kind of were on edge about the class. Uh, also, some science classes, you have to take lab classes. And without the lab requirements or the lab top, the, the minutes, you can't sit for the regents at the end of the year. So just be mindful of that as we go forward. Okay, and then finally, just we, we're, we're trying to get our students to, to reach their potential. Um, every student is a different um, person, and we're trying to make sure that they're doing it at their speed and in their own time. But we are encouraging them to move forward and to be productive members of society as they are getting ready to, to um, head off to college or to the military or to a job, or whatever their, their plans are for after high school. Uh, but these are some of the things that we want them to try to take on leadership roles, learn some time management, whether it be for sports or for activities or for a job or whatever it may be. Um, and really self-advocacy. If they're upset about something, they have to come in and let us know. They have to um, feel comfortable in sharing with us so that we can then help them to navigate out there, which isn't always you know, nice and easy, okay? Um, and then our, just our contact information. If you're not on our Instagram page, we, there's a lot of things that we post about college fairs, and even though your students are ninth and 10th graders, you could go to the college fairs. The district college fair is, is next week, so is the SUNY, uh, the, 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 is the district fair at Solana, the college fair at Solana. And then there's the one at Delphi University, and uh, I think there's a SUNY one, all three days in a row. So second, we highly recommend you, you know, going and starting to, to look at the colleges and letting students just see what they might like. I always tell kids, if you go to Malloy College and then go to Hofstra, you'll see two very different campuses and you can at least see what helps you to feel more comfortable. So anyway, that's that's our... And we go into the classroom, we make sure that the students uh, do this, but even if you're talking to your child at home, just make sure that they're in their grade level Google Classroom, because just like the Instagram, we post a lot of um, important information, dates, and things like that as well. Thank you. So now we're gonna open the floor up for any questions, if anybody has a question. For any of us.